R. Rogers World or Rebecca Rogers or Miss Rogers, whichever you prefer. And today we're gonna do a giant story time. Today we're gonna talk about the field trip from here. This is the one and only field trip I have ever or will ever take children on and let me tell you, it's a doozy. Before we get started, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to hit the little bell down at the bottom so that you are notified whenever I post something, whether it be a short, a long video, whatever it is, you definitely don't want a minute, so I'll give you a second to do that. Did you do it? Great! Okay, so before we get into like the field trip, field trip, we gotta look at the background information. We have to figure out how did we get to this field trip in the first place? So I'll tell you. My second year teaching, I started at a brand new school. And as a newbie, I really wanted to get involved. I wanted to be a part of the community, you know? The thing is though, the principal wouldn't remember my name. This was my second year teaching and I got married the spring before. So when I applied to this new school, I was Rebecca Mendel. However, by the time I was hired, I already went through the wedding. I was married. My name had changed. It changed from my educational license. I was hired Rebecca Rogers, but for some reason, not just the principal, but the school kept labeling me as Rebecca Mendel. On the schedules it said Mendel, on the sign-ins it said Mendel, my parking space said Mendel. Even the principal, when he saw me in the hallway, would always call me Miss Mendel. And this went on for a couple months until the principal needed something from me. One day I walked into the school and he came up to me and said, Miss Rogers. As soon as he said Rogers, I was like, oh, I'm on the radar now. I remember from your interview, you said you wanted to get involved. You wanted to be a part of the community. I know you're already helping with cheerleading. You're a volunteer coach. Do you mind also taking a club and being its advisor? I said, oh yeah, that doesn't seem like a problem. What club is it? He said, Model UN, Model United Nations. Fun for short. I, as a social studies teacher, of course knew what the United Nations was, but I had never heard of MUN. I had never heard of the club. I didn't know what it was they did. I, I didn't know anything about it. And furthermore, I asked the principal, well, what happened to the old advisor? He said, long story short, she's not allowed to hold this club anymore. There had been multiple occasions where she took kids on field trips to conferences and just left them there. It was so bad that other teachers from our department would have to cover for her when she just left. And she did have another teacher in the department who was helping her. Actually, the entire department, the entire school wanted nothing to do with this club because it was just such a chaotic mess. Which is why the principal asked if I would take it. I had no history with that advisor or the club or any of the chaos that went on. And he thought maybe she would be interested. And I was, I didn't mind at all. Now the principal did preface, hey, you're gonna have to do this club completely on your own. Don't ask your department. Don't ask the rest of the teachers for that matter. No one wants anything to do with this club. Anything and everything you do is gonna have to be completely on your own. I thought that the other co-advisor in our department would at least like give me some help and tips and tricks. And he did. But let me tell you, I've never met an adult that was so determined to destroy a student-led club. I don't know if it was the old advisor that he just wanted to spite or if he had something against the kids. I don't know. But he just wanted this club to die. He tried all year to convince me to just let it die and completely take it away from these kids. I thought that was really weird. Not only that, but the old advisor, who still had a job at this school, how, I don't know. She would come to my room and just yell at me. I had to kick her out of my room multiple times. She was so angry. She was very possessive over this club and everything she did for it in the past. And she just kept telling me that I would need her. I would need her help. And even if the principal didn't know, I would need her to help in the background. As if I wasn't capable of pulling it off on my own. And I didn't like that very much. I wanted to show her, I wanted to show the other teacher, I wanted to show all the teachers that I could do this. I could run this club fine. And not only that, I could take them to conferences and do well. So I decided to not just look into conferences around the county or around the state. I wanted to find the biggest conference available, take my kids and get an award. I found the conference in New York at the actual United Nations an international conference with students all around the world. That's the one that I wanted to take my kids to. And I found out that my friend at my old school who runs Model UN at 
that school, she was also going to this conference. And I thought, this is it. This is how I'm gonna show all of these teachers, all of these adults, these kids that I want to support them and I can do this. So I talked to the principal, I said, this is my plan, this is where I wanna go, I will have a teacher that I know there, and he said, this is great, love it, I'll do whatever I need to support you, just be warned, you will need chaperones. Remember, do not ask anyone here at this school. No one at this school wants to be associated with that club, okay? Chaperones, not at the school. I was a little nervous to ask for parent chaperones. I didn't know any of these kids or their parents and I was really nervous to have a parent volunteer to go who I clashed with. I'm a very young teacher and I know it's really easy for a lot of older adults to kind of see me as a kid myself sometimes. I just didn't want that to happen on the first real field trip that I took kids on. So you know who I asked? My parents! Got them approved by the county. Sounds good, done deal. My mom already volunteered for things around the county, so it was really easy. My parents were gonna chaperone on this trip. It seemed perfect. I then went to the assistant principal who was in charge of all field trips and I said, hey, I'm a second year teacher. I've never done this before. Tell me exactly what I need to make this happen. Tell me exactly what I need to get approved, to have all of my ducks in a row. I need everything. So he made me an entire list. And I abided by that list completely. I started planning this thing, what, maybe in late September? I sent forms home, I got forms signed. I dotted all of my I's, crossed all my X's. I think that's what the phrase is. I don't know, maybe I got that wrong. <laughs> just to make sure that nothing would go wrong. In planning it, I ran everything by my admin, I ran everything by the other teacher who was going at another school. To me, nothing could go wrong on this trip. Everything was ready, everything. This field trip was gonna be in March, March 2020. And I already know what you're thinking. That wasn't even the problem. Like, that wasn't even the problem, just wait. So a couple days leading up to this trip, I get a call on my cell phone and it's one of my kid's parents. If I'm gonna take these kids across the country, yeah, their parents are gonna have my phone number. I get a call, it's like 7 p.m. I'm in the middle of making dinner, but I still answer, cause why not, I just wanna be helpful. And there's a mom screaming at me. She just keeps saying over and over, why are you changing the plans? Why are you changing the plans? And I'm very confused. I say, I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing's changed. Everything has been the same plan since September. What, can you please clarify what you feel has changed? And she asked, why are you making my daughter pay for lunch on this trip? And I said, ma'am, that's been the plan the entire time. On all the forms I sent home with all the expenses and all the information, that's always been the plan. Lunch isn't provided by the conference. She responded with, well, when I grow on cruise vacations, food is always included. Well, this isn't a cruise or a vacation. This is a club conference. And I tell her, ma'am, the conference does not provide lunch. They never provided lunch. Well, my daughter says that lunch was supposed to be included and now all of a sudden it isn't. No, I'm sorry, that was never the case. Are you calling my daughter a liar? I said, ma'am, I sent forms home. You signed them and sent them back. I don't know what to tell you. All of the financial information was listed. Well, why are you not paying for the kids to eat? I can't afford for 13 teenagers to eat three meals a day for three or four days. And she couldn't understand why I couldn't afford it. And then on top of it, she wanted to know the plan for lunch. I said, well, we have three chaperones. We're gonna pick three different places right around the hotel. Maybe whoever wants to go to the deli can go with this chaperone. Or whoever wants to go to the Chinese food place can go with this chaperone. We'll make sure the kids have three options. An adult will go with them wherever they wanna go. And we'll just have three groups. Well, what if my daughter doesn't want to go to one of those three options? I guess she can Uber eat to the hotel. I don't know. And before you ask, no, there was no dietary restriction. She wasn't vegan. She didn't have any allergies or anything. Her mom really just wanted to make sure that lunch would be dictated around whatever her daughter was craving at that time. I said, I'm sorry. She can either pick one of the options or she can Uber Eats. I don't know what to tell you. And the mom, mom did not like that. 
she just kept yelling we weren't getting anywhere it was not constructive and eventually i just told her look ma'am i'm literally making dinner right now okay it's 7 p.m if you just keep yelling at me i'm just gonna hang up the phone okay i'm not doing this right now she did not like that she said well i'm letting you know that i'm recording this conversation and if you just hang up on me i'm gonna send it to your principal i said okay hi mr principal click done with that it we do not have time for this so i go to school the next day knowing there's gonna be a problem and there was the mom called the principal and told him that because we had a phone conversation and i was able to hear her speak i noticed she had an accent and was making her daughter pay for lunch and her alone because i hate foreign people my dad is foreign my grandparents are foreign that entire side of my family is foreign and I told my principal and assistant principal that there's nothing wrong. I didn't do anything. She's just picking a fight and trying to find some way to be a victim here. My assistant principal was like, oh, absolutely. This is BS. Like, there's no reason for her to try and say that she probably just didn't realize half your family is foreign and just thought it would work because it's worked before or something. My principal was like, oh, well, you made her feel like you hate foreign people. No, I didn't. I just told her that she should have paid more attention to the forms. That lunch was never included and that her daughter would have to take an option or Uber Eats just like anyone else. My principal was like, oh, well maybe she's concerned the kids are gonna be running around New York by themselves. I said, no, they're not. Now my friend at the other school, she gives them a couple block radius and tells them just use the buddy system. We weren't even doing that. The kids were gonna have a chaperone with them at all times. There was no reason, no reason to even think that. That's just, again, something that she made up to be mad about something because I wouldn't pay for her child's lunch. My assistant principal pulled me aside and said, you know, I know you're leaving on your trip tomorrow. Just be careful. No, she's gonna look for something to be upset about. So just do your best. It'll all be okay. Just have fun. Okay. So the day of the trip comes. We go straight to the airport in the morning. I'm waiting for kids to show up, to meet their parents, let them know, yes, I am an adult. I am going to be taking care of your kid. They are safe with me and my parents who are chaperoning. I'm waiting for mom to show up. I am dreading having to talk to her in person. I'm looking around nervously like, I don't even know what this lady looks like, to be honest. And all of a sudden I see her daughter. We'll call her daughter Margaret. Margaret shows up, I instantly look around, see if mom's there, she's not. Her dad shows up instead. Margaret walks right up to me and puts a wad of cash in my face and says, this is my $500 for food these three or four days. That's a lot of money for someone who didn't want to pay it in the first place. She says, my mom says, you're going to hold this for me all week. I look at her and I say, no, I'm sorry, I'm not a bank. I'm not gonna be responsible for your $500. That's a lot of money, no thank you. She looks at me and she says, my mom says your principal says, you're going to hold my money for this whole trip. I'm looking at her, I'm looking at her dad who's staring at me and I look at my parents who are looking at me and everyone's just kind of looking at me and I panic a little bit and I say, you know what? I don't know why my principal would say I have to hold your money and I definitely am going to call him and talk to him about it. I'll take it right now. I know, I know, I know you're screaming at me through the screen. I know, I know. We, I'll take it right now. And as soon as we land, cause like we gotta go, we're running out of time. I'll call him when we land and I'll see what's going on. Okay, so I take it. I'm already feeling like uh, in my gut. I'm like, oh, something's not right. This is not good. As we are getting to the flight, I have like another weird feeling of I feel like I need to check on our bus reservation, like the charter bus taking us from the airport to the hotel. Don't know why I had this feeling. The universe is looking out for me. I called just to double check. Hey, the bus is gonna be there, right? They lost our reservation. Thank goodness. So like literally I'm getting on the plane, on the phone with these people, making sure that my kids have some way to get from the airport to the hotel. On the plane, I let the kids decide between all the seats that we had who wanted to sit where. Of course, no one wanted to sit next to me. Aww. 
So we had the kids, my dad sat right behind the kids, my mom and I sat right in front of the kids just so we kind of like sandwiched them in case they needed something. I'm sitting with my mom talking about how stressed I am about the bus, about Margaret and her mom, how I'm gonna have to talk to the principal, how I'm already panicking. And it didn't help that this was the bumpiest flight I had ever experienced in my life. I fly a lot, okay? Like I travel a whole lot. I've never been on such a turbulent flight. And the landing was the absolute worst part. I don't get sick flying. I was feeling nauseous. And as we're landing, like we're all bracing ourselves, I get a little tap on my shoulder. And I look around and there's a girl standing behind me. One of my students. We'll call her Sally. Sally wanted to tell me about another student. We'll call her Haley. In the calmest tone I've ever heard come out of a 16 year old girl's mouth, Sally says, Miss Rogers, Haley's having a panic attack and she's not breathing. What? I'm undoing my seatbelt as quick as I can. I'm jumping, sprinting to the back of the plane. And sure enough, there is Haley, like turning a purplish color, is pressing herself up against the wall of the plane for whatever reason, is hyperventilating. I'm yanking her out of the seat to try and get her some air so she's not so claustrophobic. All the kids are trying to like look at her. I'm like, get out of her face, she needs to breathe. I call over the flight attendants. We try to get her in the fetal position, try to get her breathing as the plane is landing. As soon as we hit the ground, we call paramedics. I call her parents. And they too were very calm. Oh, we don't know. She's flown lots of times. She's not prone to panic attacks. We don't know what to tell you. Okay, what do I do? So we try everything that we can to think of to calm her down, to help her start breathing. She's telling us that she's starting to get tunnel vision, that she's having trouble even like moving and breathing and seeing at this point. Everyone on the plane is looking at us. The other kids are freaking out because their friend is like really struggling right now. I have to instruct my parents to take the rest of the kids to the hotel because opening ceremonies are tonight. And I just have to wait for the paramedics to come get her off this plane. Now, I'm not a legal expert. That's, that's my husband's job. But apparently because I was not her guardian, I'm not related to her in any way and she was a minor in another state, they had to take her to the hospital, which no problem with that. Yay for minor safety, that's good. So we did. And by the time we got to the hospital, they were measuring her blood pressure. And by the way, she was a lot calmer at this point. Like she was able to breathe once we got to the hospital. She was talking, she was able to move around and see, but you know, we still had to take her to the hospital. And while she was like at this level of calm, her blood pressure was still somewhere around 170 or 180. I don't even wanna know what it was on the plane. And the doctors and nurses just kept saying, we cannot release you until you're at like a stable blood pressure. I appreciate you looking out for her health. She, as a 16 year old girl who was missing out on opening ceremonies with her friends, did not like this at all. She was having a whole fit and I felt so bad. I was like, nurses, I'm sorry. I appreciate you. After hours of sitting in the hospital with this girl, on the phone with her parents the whole time, like just another 10 minute update and they're still so calm. They're like, oh, we trust you. <laughs> I finally am like, okay, I gotta find some other way to calm her down. So you know what I do? I pull out my phone and I put on Friends on Netflix. And within like 20 minutes, that blood pressure just do, 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 went down. Great, sounds good. We get on the $80 Uber ride to go from the children's hospital to the hotel. And I'm thinking, all right, this is the worst thing that could happen on this trip, right? At this point, I'm not even thinking about having to call my principal about Margaret. I'm sitting there updating admin about Haley. I completely forget to even mention the money. I've got other things on my mind at this point in time. And on the ride back to the hotel, I'm just thinking, all right, this is the worst thing that could happen. It'll be smooth sailing from here. And all of a sudden, as Haley's looking out the window, just admiring the city, she turns to me and she goes, I'm so proud of Sally. I'm thinking she means cause Sally like saw Haley was having a problem and came to get me on the plane. And I'm like, oh really? Yeah, she's not even having any withdrawal symptoms. What? Withdrawal symptoms? What are you talking about? Apparently, Sally often gets written up for 
drugs and skipping and lots of things that she shouldn't be doing around school. And she promised either her mom or her friends, I don't really remember at this point, that she would stop the drugs for this trip so that no one like got caught or got in trouble or anything like that. And all of the teachers around the school knew that she got in trouble with this stuff all the time and no one told me. Not even my admin. And so I call my principal again after already talking to them about Haley and I'm like, hey, what's the deal with Sally? Oh, we didn't know she was on the trip. We wouldn't have let her go. I gave you a list of all the kids going. Oh yeah, but we didn't check it for like disciplinary issues. Why not? Don't you think that would be an important thing to do? What else am I giving you the list for? The other school does that. In fact, the other teacher told me that when I submit the list of students, it's for admin to check and make sure that they're okay to go on the trip. Oh yeah, we don't do that here. Why not? You know what? I'll just, I'll just keep an extra heavy eye on her. I'll tell my parents to keep an extra heavy eye on her. So far, so good. I mean, she was responsible on the plane. Yeah, she came to get an adult. Maybe there's not gonna be a problem, right? Not even thinking about Margaret's money at this point in time. So that day ends, the conference starts, all the kids are kind of split up between the delegations, meaning that they're in different parts of the hotel in different kinds of delegation meetings. We just found a little spot in one of the hallways where our group could congregate, whether they didn't have a delegation meeting at that time or they needed something from us. We always made sure there was an adult there and I would go and like check in the different rooms of the kids, take some pictures of them, you know, cute proud teacher things. I was just so excited for them. And they worked so hard to get there, right? I wanted to support them. And one of the days, I can't remember if it was day one or day two, I'll be honest, this was two years ago. So at this point, it's all a little blurred. Sally comes up to me in our little hallway spot and she goes, Miss Rogers, there's a really cute boy in my delegation and he invited me to go to lunch and I really wanna go with him. And I say, oh, okay, are you gonna like bring food back to our little congregated area? No, like I wanna go across the street with him and his friends and have lunch with all of them. Um, no, you're not going by yourself. Well, why not? Because you're 16 and we're in a completely different state and I'm legally responsible for you. She said, they're going as an entire delegation, their advisor's going with them. If I introduce you to their teacher, can I go? I said, I, I gotta think about this. I, I don't know, I don't know how I'm feeling about it. I talked to my parents about it. I talked to the other teacher at the other school. She's like, Rebecca, you're being too harsh. I let my kids have a couple block radius to just go and use the buddy system. She's like, if she's going with an adult, you should let her go. While I'm contemplating this and having this internal struggle, Margaret comes up to me and says, I need 12 something for Chick-fil-A. Oh, the money. I go to my bag and I pull out her wad of cash and I say, here, take it. And she's like, no, I don't want that whole thing. I just need the 12 something for Chick-fil-A. I'm not gonna sit here and count out your giant wad of cash. I shouldn't even have it in the first place. I haven't gotten a second to call my principal about this. We've had other things go on, okay? You take this, it's out of my possession. I would also like to know, I had adult and children witnesses to this. She wasn't super happy. I didn't even like comment on the fact that she looked irritated. I just handed it to her. I had other things to worry about. So I ended up telling Sally, if I meet this teacher and I can put the fear of God into her that she protects you and make sure that you're safe and all of these things, then okay, you can go. So against my better judgment, I said, sure. Sally brings the delegation's teacher to come meet me. And the moment I lay eyes on this teacher, red flags are just going off in my brain because she does not look like she's more than 16 years old. And I'm like, nope, absolutely not. No, 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 no. I am not stupid. And my mom goes, Rebecca, you always hate when people think you are a student. Don't do that to this new teacher. What if she's thinking the same thing about you? And I think, okay. And I could have sworn I saw a faculty badge. At this point, I could have made it up in my brain, but I said, okay, you can go with this teacher. I trust you. 
and thanks for compromising with me. See you in a couple hours. She goes to lunch, she comes back, we do the rest of the sessions. It's fine. I think I think everything's fine, okay? Later that day, she says, Miss Rogers, thank you so much for letting me go earlier. They've invited me to also join them for dinner. Can I please go with them to dinner as well? Don't worry, the same teacher will be there. The red flags and the sirens are all up in my brain like, no! Why don't we all go? Why don't we all go across the street to eat dinner? Miss Rogers, I don't need a babysitter. No, 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 we all need to eat. What if that's where we wanted to go too? Maybe everyone wants to hang out with each other. Not a big deal. Before we go to dinner, I get word that another one of my kids, a senior boy is actually being bullied in his delegation by a girl from another school. So then I gotta go find the directors. I gotta talk to them. I gotta find out what school she goes to. Let her teachers know. Because you're not just gonna mess with my kids like that. That, no. Check on the other kids, see how everyone else is doing. It's good to go. So we all go to dinner all across the street. Everyone's having a good time. Now, after a little while of like all meeting each other, it definitely became like our kids stuck to themselves and their kids stuck to themselves, except Haley, Sally, and another boy from our school, they were all mingling together. So most of my kids kind of stuck to themselves after like initially meeting everyone, which is fine, nothing wrong with that. One of my boys comes up to me and says, hey, Miss Rogers, you see Sally sitting over there by that boy she likes? What if I go sit next to her and embarrass her in front of him? And I say, dude, come on, don't do that. She's with their teacher, you know? Don't embarrass me by going acting like a fool in front of another adult, okay? And he looks at me all confused, Miss Rogers, that's not their teacher. What do you mean? Sally literally brought her to me and introduced her as their school's advisor. He looks at me, he says, hold on, be right back. He goes and he sits next to them for a minute or two and I'm just watching them like a hawk at this point. My heart is racing and I'm like, no, 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 don't tell me. Don't tell me my instincts are right, no. He comes back over and he says, Miss Rogers, she's 16, that's not a teacher. Ah! Is Sally the only one that knows? Oh no, Miss Rogers, Haley also knows and so does the other boy that's sitting with them. All three of them know for sure that she's 16 years old. So all three of them are in on the lie. So I go to my parents and I say, you guys are gonna have to stay with the rest of the kids, make sure that they stay until we were supposed to be done with dinner and then bring them back up. That night was actually supposed to be a social for the conference. It was the last night that everyone was gonna be there for the conference. So they were gonna have basically like a big party for all the kids. I said, you guys stay with the kids until you take them up to get ready for the social. I've gotta go. So I pull up my phone and I text the three of them, Haley, Sally, and the other boy. I know exactly what's going on. In about 10 seconds, I'm gonna be at the door of the restaurant and you are going to meet me there. We are gonna walk across the street, go up to our rooms, and you're gonna tell me exactly what is going on. And if you are not at that door in about 10 seconds, I personally will book you a flight first thing in the morning. You will never come back here again. You will never come back to this club and I'm going to write you up. As soon as their phones go off, you can see the panic on their faces that quickly like put all their stuff away, meet me at the door. We walk across the street in silence, get up to the room and I laid into them. And when I tell you Haley and the other boy sold Sally out so quick, apparently she came up with the plan and they just found out. When I tell you the boy literally got on his hands and knees and kissed my feet sobbing, because he was so devastated and so shameful. Ms. Rogers, I'm so sorry. I would never purposely upset you. And then they continued to throw her under the bus. Apparently, Sally had been shoplifting at every single shop, every single store, every single whatever that we've been to the entire few days that we've been there. And all the kids knew and they were so scared that I was gonna find out and get mad and never let them come back. All of the kids took turns going behind her, paying for whatever she was stealing. And Sally knew about it and was okay with it because hey, at least it's not her money. So at this point, it's now bigger than her planning to lie to me, lying to me twice, dragging them all into it. It's now shoplifting also. So I tell the other two, look, I will deal with you separately. I have some calls that I need to make right now. You're not off the hook. 
but I gotta deal with some other things right now. Go get ready for the social. I will address you two later. To Sally, I say, you're not going to the social, okay? I'm sorry. You've now lied to sneak around New York with your friends. I'm not gonna give you the opportunity to go to this big party where you can easily just sneak out again. I'm sorry, I don't trust you. You've been lying, you've been stealing. I'm sorry, you're not going. You can stay in your room. She's, well, can I have that boy come up to my room and keep me company? No, you can't have a boy come up to your hotel room. So I call her mom, tell her mom what's going on. On the phone, her mom is like, oh, Miss Rogers, I'm so sorry, I'm so embarrassed, blah, blah, blah. I give the phone to Sally, because her mom wants to talk to her. For whatever reason, Sally keeps it on speakerphone. Again, not really sure why, she just does. And I guess her mom didn't realize she was on speakerphone. Sally, honey, I'm so sorry this is happening to you. What's happening to her? She's being held accountable for her actions? It's not fair you're going through this. I'm so sorry. What are you talking about? She's literally been lying and stealing and whatever. What is happening to her? Clearly not going to get any real support from mom. So I just, I'm done with it. I've had enough. I'm fed up. My parents and I decide we're going to take shifts to like sit along the hallway. Not just to watch and make sure Sally doesn't bring a boy up to her room. But also like in case the kids need something while they're out. Then we take shifts, you know? So while I was downstairs in the lobby talking to some of the other kids, trying to make sure that they're all still having a good time, three of them come up to me and are like, Miss Rogers, we just wanted to let you know that Sally's texted everybody here that she's planning to bring that boy up to her room. Like she's asking us to distract you so that she can like bring him up without you noticing. <sighs> okay. So I text my mom who's like up there now. I said, hey, I'm coming up. I'll be there in a second. My mom's like, cool, like I'm gonna go grab something from the room if you're coming up right now. Great, I'll be there in like 30 seconds. Of course, as soon as my mom walks into the room is when I get onto the floor and I actually see the boy walking down the hallway. And of course it's right when my mom goes to get whatever it was from her room. And I call out to him. I don't know if he ignored me or if he just didn't hear me. Now granted, we were in New York City, there was a party going on right below our feet, it was super noisy outside, maybe he didn't hear me. So I tried to like sprint down to catch up with him, he knocked on Sally's door, she opened it, I'm like wait no! As soon as I get to the door it just happened to slam shut real quick, so I'm knocking on it, Sally, 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 let me in, let me in, let me in, and she opens it, hey Miss Rogers, what's going on? Cut the crap. I said, he needs to get out of here right now. What do you mean? Who are you talking about? I walk into her room. He is nowhere to be seen. He knew to hide, okay? That bottom line, he knew to hide. I look over to the curtain and see the curtain has magically grown feet because there are shoes sticking out from it. I said, that, that needs to go like right now. Miss Rogers, he only brought me ice cream. Okay, he could have left it at your door. I don't care. He can't be in here. Well, why not? Because you're 16 years old in New York and I'm legally responsible for you. You can't just have a boy come up to your hotel room. He's sitting here trying to argue. I'm just trying to keep her company because she's lonely. That's the point. She's in trouble, okay? It's not like she's completely by herself. She has roommates. She has roommates that are staying in the room with her. They're just at the social. She can't go to the social because I don't trust she's not gonna run off to New York. She's in trouble. She's been lying. She's been stealing. And I don't say it, but because there's no withdrawal symptoms, I'm not so sure she's not using whatever it is she was on in the first place. He's still trying to argue with me about, he just wants to keep her company. And I look at him, I said, if you do not get out of here, I'm not only gonna make sure that you can never come to this conference again. I'm gonna make sure your school can't come to this conference again because your teacher is clearly not keeping eyes on you. He gets quiet real quick. He just dips out and she has the audacity to be mad that I embarrassed her in front of him. I embarrassed you by holding you accountable. So then I call her mom again. I say, Sally, why don't you tell your mom what just happened? So she takes the phone and she literally says to her mom, Mom, Miss Rogers is so angry at me because I wanted to eat ice cream. What? So I grab the phone back and I have to tell her mom actually what happened. And again, on the phone, her mom is like, oh, Miss Rogers, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed, blah, blah, blah. And then once I give it to Sally, again, Sally, honey, so sorry. Don't know why this is happening 
to you. Am I the only one that sees a problem with this? Sally's sobbing and asking why I hate her because she likes ice cream. No matter how many times I try to explain to her, it's not the ice cream. It's the lying, the stealing, and trying to sneak a boy up to her hotel room that I'm upset with. So I leave her room to go to my own room because I'm like done for the night. The social's over. The kids are starting to go back to their rooms. I see another one of my boys just lying on the floor in the hallway with a bunch of our kids around him. Hey, Miss Rogers. Hey, uh, what you doing? Um, so there were a bunch of mosh pits at the social and I might have a concussion. Oh, really? Of course you do. He ended up being fine. Like it wasn't a concussion. He was totally okay, but I was still panicking in the moment. Then we see ambulances roll up to the hotel because my friend at the other school has students have like a severe allergic reaction. It's their turn to go to the hospital. I'm just like done with this trip at this point. It just needs to be over. The day ends, I'm ready to go to bed. The next day is just the last little bit of sessions and then closing ceremonies and then everything is done. I'm emotionally drained. The kids are emotionally drained. Everyone just wants to go home at this point. I mean, granted, the other kids are having the time of their lives. Like they're having a really good time. They're doing really well. I'm super proud of them. Trying to make sure the trip is still like really great for everybody else. Cause there's 13 kids here, but we do it. We get to the end of closing ceremonies. They're giving out awards. And I look at the president of the club and I tell him, if we get an award, I want you to go up. And he's like, Miss Rogers, we've never been to one of these conferences before. I don't think so. And I'm like, no, like I'm telling you, you guys worked hard. I think you guys have earned it. I think, I think there's a chance. And sure enough, we did it. We got an award and the looks on my kids' faces was worth it all. Every single thing that happened that whole week became so worth it in that moment. And I thought that would make everything on this trip okay. So we go home and I'm like passing kids off to their parents, meeting everyone again, talking to Haley's parents about the medical issues, talking to Sally's parents about things and while we're getting everything situated margaret comes up to me and is like hey miss rogers i'm ready for my 500 dollars back and i in the process of trying to talk to all the parents and get all the things and try to get home i like can't even think straight right now and i was like hun i can't talk to you about this right now i'm gonna have to get back with you at school like i got other things going on at this time gotta go get bags down at the baggage claim gotta talk to all these parents I'll get with you later this week. So she goes home, she goes with her parents. My mom comes over and goes, Rebecca, don't you remember that you handed that to her in the hallway when you were dealing with the Sally stuff? Right, right, okay, cool. She probably just forgot, seeing as how I forgot. I bet she's gonna go home, find it in her carry-on. End of story. A week goes by, I don't hear from Margaret. I genuinely believe she just finds it in her carry-on and is like, okay, cool, sounds good. Don't need to talk to Miss Rogers about it. Oh no, one day after school, she comes to my room and this was a shared room. So I had another teacher in there as well. She goes, Miss Rogers, so I just wanna check in again about my $500. I said, oh, Margaret, don't you remember that you asked for it when we were in New York? You said you wanted 12 something for Chick-fil-A. So I handed you the cash. And at first she's, well, no, I gave that back to you because remember I said that my mom said you had to hold my money. And I said, no, I'm, you didn't give it back to me. I'm sorry, that didn't happen. And then she changed her story to, well, I didn't even need to ask you for the money because Lucy said she would pay for me. And I didn't even ask you to give me any money. And she changed the story to something along those lines two or three times. And the other teacher heard her. And at the end of the conversation, I just said, Margaret, I gave you your money back. Another adult has now heard you change your story about whether or not you even asked me for it a few times. I'm sorry, you have it. If you lost it, I'm really sorry, but I don't have it. I gave it back to you. She did not like that. She left with the biggest attitude and the mom called the school saying that I stole $500 from her. She wanted me gone, it was a whole thing. My assistant principal was like, ma'am, why would Miss Rogers risk her entire career over $500? Like that's not even a month's paycheck. And the mom like, she didn't care. She was convinced I stole this money. And I went to the principal and I was like, this lady is gonna look for any excuse to throw me under the bus. 
and he looked at me in the face and said, well, Miss Rogers, maybe you wouldn't have had such an eventful trip if you just took another teacher with you. What? A teacher that knows these kids and has been on field trips before. In fact, I don't think you should go on another field trip without taking another teacher with you. I think that you need to have one with you next time. But you told me not to ask anyone else. Well, I don't remember having that conversation, um, so you must be mistaken. What? It would just so happen to be that any time he told me to do something or gave me permission for something or anything that didn't turn out the way that he thought it was, he wouldn't remember that he asked me to do it or that he told me I could do it and that would become a problem. And the thing is, nothing from the trip ever got resolved. No one got in trouble, nothing about money or anything ever got resolved because school shut down a week later. And that is the story of the first and last big field trip I have ever taken students on. I hope you enjoyed my anxiety ridden story. Remember, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the little bell down at the bottom so that you are notified whenever I post anything. And if you really like this story, I have lots of other really long ones that I could tell, so just let me know. In the comments, you can tell me maybe what you would have done differently. I did what I could, but I love you guys. Bye, my lovelies. Mwah.